Our first storyteller of the evening is Cindy Flores. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, you know, the longer I sat here waiting for everyone to come in, the more I realized I'm not sure that I had a story to tell because I, I recognize that in comparison to a lot of people, I'm very blessed and very lucky um, to have gotten away with my home. I still have my home, I still have my car, I still have everything that belongs to me, and so many people don't. And I have um, a touch of survivor's guilt for that. I feel very bad for that. Um, it makes me very emotional because in the past in my life, I have lost everything I own to a fire. And I remember I was recovering from a surgery, swollen bandages cut in half in a wheelchair, sifting through my ashes, just trying to find any kind of semblance of what my life was before the fire. So you, all of us now will have this story to tell in our lives of before the fire and after the fire. And although thankfully my story is not tragic and I didn't lose anything, um, I still have a part of the story because I'm here and I'm here with everyone. And as we've gone through this time, even though there's a heavy weight in Ventura County, this, this shared solemnness, I also feel that it's brought about a wonderful sense of togetherness and that our community has really gathered together to share love and feel love. So with that, I will say um, on the night of the fire, the first Monday night, I was having dinner off the avenue in Ventura, went to my car and saw ash coming down, but didn't smell smoke. <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the heck is going on? You know, my car was covered in ash, finished dinner, go home. We live off um, Stanley and the avenue, so up in the old tracks. And when we left the restaurant, I'm a moon gazer. The moon was white on Main Street. And when we got to Stanley, the moon was red. And I'm like, whoa, something's happening. There was got to be a fire somewhere. Still didn't smell it. So this is 8.30, 9 o'clock. Go inside the house, I do some work, I go visit a friend in Camarillo, 9.30 or so. As I'm driving from Ventura to Camarillo on the 101, I look over and I see the fire. And no pun intended, I'm like, holy smokes, you know? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And I took some initial pictures of the fire, I'm like, oh my God. I called everybody, I'm like, there's a fire, I don't know what's happening. I get to Camarillo, I go to my friend's house, and as soon as I got out of the car, the power went out. And my girlfriend goes, oh, this happens all the time. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> there's a fire, something major is happening here. Anyway, you know, as we know, we all experienced the blackout for so many hours. At 10 o'clock, the person I date and Ventura says, we're getting evacuated. Is there room for us at the house? And I said, come on over. And they just immediately started grabbing all of their things. I went back to the house to help them get their things. We had like 15, 20 minutes by the time I got there. We got, you know, you don't know what to get. They started getting books and socks and stuff like that. I'm like, get the heirlooms, your grandpa's World War II cap and all the things you can't replace. By the time we left the house, the fire was 200 feet across the street, burning down the hill. And all we saw was the hill on fire. And as we left Ventura, all of the cars, near accidents, all the stuff, just watching the fire go. I've been sad ever since. I've just had a heavy heart for everyone. I think of the little lady who lost her life the night of the fire, Miss, Miss Virginia. I think of her family. Um, Corey Iverson, you know, what a great soul to give his life for us. I think of all of the first responders, all of the utility workers, everyone who's behind the scenes that doesn't get counted or thought of all of the time for their tire, tireless efforts for saving us and protecting us. 
The person I date is right now working on the oil fields and has been working nonstop alongside with the firefighters initially and working nonstop to help prevent the fires from spreading even further if he could do anything at all. So there are people who are sacrificing very much for us and I want to thank them. And I want to thank all of you for being here and listening to our short stories. And I want to hear some of yours because I know we all have a shared experience, sadly. And um, that's it. <laughs> thank you. Cindy Flores, amazing. <laughs>